Well, <clears throat> today my uh, my fuel pump came back from Enderly. Um, they flow tested it. Uh, he said he could see in the bronze ring on the outer ring the, the scratches that that piece of aluminum went through. Uh, scratched it a little bit, but he didn't think it was really hurting the pump uh, that bad. What he did notice was there was some end play on the pump. Um, the spec on it is one thousandths. He said it was about two and a half thousandths. So they uh, resurfaced the end of the housing to take out the end play, and then they reflow tested it. So you can see here at uh, fifteen hundred, I was pumping three gallons a minute. Now it's three point two. It was uh, six point seven at three thousand RPM, which is now six point nine, and it was nine point two and nine point two at 4,000, but you need to remember this is a cam-driven fuel pump, so that's half the RPM of the motor. So when they tested it here at 1,500, that's actual motor RPM would have been 3,000 RPMs. It's pumping 3.2 gallons. Um, so anyway, they said it's good to go. Um, let me see if I can get all these pieces here put back on it, and uh, we'll see if we can get it mounted back on the car. And then once I get everything hooked up and mounted, before I hook up the lines at the top up here at the barrel valve, I want to go ahead and flow test the barrel valve to see what it's flowing. So let me get all these pieces on the pump, and then uh, I'll set the camera up over here, and we'll put it back together. So, let's see if we can get this back together. So we'll start with this. Oh, the positioning of this piece, so. One thing nice about the uh, all these fittings on here, everything's got O-rings on it, except for the AM. Of course, where the AM fittings go, they don't. But all of the fittings here on the pump, they're all, all got O-rings on them. So you ain't got to worry about no problem with the thing sealing. So, you know, it goes that way. the bracket on for the fuel shutoff cable and I think we're ready to put it back on.
Okay. All right, let me go over here, get the camera set up, and we'll see if we can get it back on the car. Uh, I tried setting up the tripod, and it's hard to see, so I'm trying. I'm going to try to hold this with one hand and put this on with the other hand, so you can see how it goes together. Um, I'm sure I got some people out there I know have been following it. Don't you know? Not very familiar with mechanical fuel injection and. I'm sure there's a lot of people that know a lot more than I do about it. But you can see here on the end of the pump, uh, the hex on the end. Well, there's a shaft inside this extension piece right here. And it's got a female hex sticking out this side. It's got two sets of roller bearings here. And it's got another set of bearings here. And then it slides into a hex on the inside, the piece that mounts to the end of the camshaft. So... You see here, this just slides into this, like that, and then there's two screws here that clamp this collar onto this neck right here is what holds it. So, you'll see here, if I push it in, it stops right there, right? Then if I turn it a little bit, and go this way, there, the hex is lined up, now you see it slides in right there and then I could still turn it but now the pump shaft is turning see what I'm saying so pull it back out right here now it won't go in so what I did is I measured from this groove right here to here which is a half of an inch then I took the caliper and measured back on the female hex part and it's five eighths of an inch deep so this here when this bottoms out right against here, I still have an eighth of an inch play because you don't want the pump tight up against the cam because the cam can move a little bit back and forth. So you have to have some play in there. So I'll turn it. There, you see right there, it lined up, it went in. And then uh, I'll just turn it. I had the pump mounted where it was straight up. And I'll go ahead and tighten up these two screws. And... We should be okay. I can go ahead and hook up the fuel feed line from the bottom right here. And uh, I'll hook the lines up going up to the top and the uh, throttle kit, I mean the fuel shutoff cable. And then I'll be good with this. I just got to work on the barrel valve. All right, let me get this tight and uh, I'll be right back. Well, I went ahead and put the blower belt back on because uh, I need to put that on before I could hook up the fuel inlet line and the uh, fuel shutoff cable. I also connected all the lines up here for the return and the feed up to the barrel valve. Um, but before I test the barrel valve flow test that are set it up or get closer to starting it, I want to change the pill in here. Um, right now it's got 125 thousandths in it and uh, I'm going to up it up to uh, 130 thousandths. Uh, it'll send a little more fuel back to the pump instead of in the motor and uh, hopefully that'll help lean it out a little bit So let me get the camera set up and I'll change this pill real quick show you what that looks like The outer piece you saw I just took off is a cap. It's got an O-ring seal on it. And, uh, it just caps this off, but here's the 
jet itself. gonna show up or not but anyway the, the, it's, it's etched on the edge here 100 and 130 thousands so like I said we'll go up five thousands You see here this piece, you can see it's just a plug, it's got an O-ring on it. And uh, Larry McCleary told me to uh, drill a hole in it on both sides and then I used, I put my spring through it. And he said that's kind of like a stop so that the thing can't vibrate out. Let me tighten it up. Spring is good. All right, well, let me get the gauges set up and we'll blow the barrel valve, see where it's set at. And uh, I'll check the gaps on the butterfly. And hopefully we'll try to get it started. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we'll set the gap on the butterflies uh, first. And uh, I got this set up over here so you can see this. This is a piece of uh, 14 gauge wire, stranded, copper stranded wire. And if you can see my caliper, all right? If you measure this piece, a single strand of wire is 13 thousandths on a single strand. Now they're calling for between eight to um, 10 thousandths gap on the butterfly. This wire here is, if you can see it, is a piece of 13 thousandths, right? Just to give you an idea, if I open this, stick that wire in there. I don't know how you can see it, but that's 13 thousandths. And now, that's just a eight to 10 is a starting point. You know what I'm saying? It basically depends on the cubic inches of the motor too and the size of the injector hat. Um, these butterflies are four and three eighths and I'm running uh, 545 cubic inches. So it might be a little to the bigger side or no, uh, the gap, but I'm gonna go ahead with the 13 thousandths and we'll try it there. And uh, We'll see how fast it idles. I might have to adjust it and slow it down a little bit. Next thing I gotta do is, uh, I'm gonna try to flow test this uh, leak down test, the barrel valve. So let me get that set up and uh, I'll show you that. Well, I went ahead and tried to make my own leak down tester and it didn't work. 
and uh, I couldn't figure out why it didn't work. So uh, I called the people out at Good Vibrations Motorsports out in California. Um, super nice people, super friendly. And uh, I told him what I did and how I met, you know, and then he says, he says, well, it won't work. And I said, well, why is that? And he says, because the leak down detect tester has an orifice built into it on the outlet side of the regulator. So somewhere coming out of the regulator here before the quick dis the coupling to unhook it, there's an orifice. He says it's, he thinks it was around 40 thousandths of an inch diameter, but it's a, they're all set at the same and calculated the same way. And he says that that's what you need to leak down the test of barrel valve. So my, my setup didn't work. So I had to go ahead and order one. And he said it'll be here in a couple of days. But in the meantime, I'm really close and I'm wanting to get it started. So I think what I'm going to do is turn the fuel down on the barrel valve to start out with. It might not stay running. And I might have to adjust it a couple of times and then just go from there. Because the leak down test is just to get you close. You, you can't really tune it just with the leak down tester, you know. So let me get this off. And uh, I got the trailer blocking my door. I want to get the, I push the car back outside and I might try to go ahead and we'll see if we can get it started. So I got all the fuel lines put back on. Everything adjusted. Check for leaks, and I ain't got nothing leaking. So, Let's see if I can get it started, get it to run.
It's amazing. You could run it that long. I think just now starting to get some temperature in it. Got up to 110. Next thing now is to see if it'll start on its own. Uh, seems to be running pretty good right there. It's not blowing too much fuel. It's got pretty good throttle response. Let me see if it'll start back up. It's running pretty good right there. It's not blowing, blowing a lot of fuel out. It's got a good response. I think I'm gonna leave it. Uh, calling for a chance at rain today. I don't know if you can see in this video how cloudy it is. We're gonna, gonna get caught in the rain, but. I think I'm gonna wait and see tomorrow if it's a little nicer chance for weather. And maybe I'll take it out for a spin tomorrow I'll video it. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Don't forget like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you at the next cruising.